have so many incredible plans for this GT40. I have ITVs, I have paint, I have wheels and tires. We're doing a full rehaul on this car and I'm so excited. But unfortunately, we are having some mechanical issues like she pops out of first gear anytime you step on it. Every time I drive her, she's popping out of first gear. Fortunately, second gear works just fine though. Face forward. <laughs> but then there's also this really bad squealing sound too. But I can just let the car sit. So hopefully this is an easy transmission fix and I don't need to buy a $10,000 transmission. It is such a beautiful day out that I had to just go for a cruise. I never thought I would love this car as much as I do. Look how beautiful it is. Can we just admire her body lines for a minute? The plan is to do new paint, but the color is growing on me. Comment below and let me know what you think, but I'm starting to like the yellow. Either way, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. I have wheels that are currently being custom made by Forgeline that are really gonna fit out these extended fenders and some massive meaty tires to pair with it. Plus imagine ITBs right out of the back that you can see perfectly through the rear glass. Plus the driving, it's just gonna be so much smoother. The cold starts aren't gonna be a problem anymore. We just have to fix these issues issues first. Now, I've already called the manufacturer of this transmission to let them know that it's popping out of first gear and they recommended that I check the linkage. Let me show you guys. Unfortunately, it's already been checked, it's been adjusted and it's still popping out of gear. Keep in mind, this GT40 has been sitting rotting in someone's yard for the last 20 years. So there could be an issue with rust internally. There could be a lot of issues. Adjusting the linkage didn't fix anything, but I kind of want to take off the cover on that box, see if maybe there's some grime in there. I want to try removing the cover for the shifter to see if maybe there's something preventing it from going all the way in gear. There's some other issues like, listen to this. That's the squealing I'm telling you guys about. It gets really loud when you drive. So I also want to try to fix that. And because there's absolutely zero ventilation in this car, finish installing the AC. You're kidding me. I pull over and I get stranded. Come on, I can start. This is not really happening. <laughs> Come on, little girl. Come on. I tried putting fuel in the car just now. I didn't film it because I was a little embarrassed because I was like, there's no way this car just died and I didn't put fuel in it. Maybe she just needs a good old fashioned jump. So I'm just gonna sit here and make race car noises. I would love to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. We're looking for a gift for the holidays and you haven't quite figured out what you want to give a loved one? Well, may I recommend Raycon's Everyday Earbuds? <laughs> I love to use these when I'm listening to podcasts or taking uni on walks. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds are a must to have for any audio lover. With three sound profiles, awareness mode, water resistance, a wireless charging case, and 32 hours of battery life. One more could you ask for? I always forget to plug and charge my electronics in and these are super easy because I just throw them in my purse and whenever I need it, I trust that they are charged. This past year, Raycon has expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon PowerTech featuring high-speed cables and chargers. If you haven't tried out any of their power products, I'd highly recommend taking a look at those as well. They have charging pads, three-in-one cables, and more. Raycon has made a name for themselves in the premium audio space because they provide premium tech products at a great price. Their products have earned tens of thousands of five-star reviews. They offer easy and free returns free shipping, and buy now and pay later options. Raycon's products are so universally useful, perfect for a last minute holiday gift or to help someone ring in the new year. And right now, Raycon is offering limited time bundles on some of their best selling products. And me personally, I'm a fan of the fitness audio kit, which includes fitness earbuds and fitness headphones. This holiday season, get premium audio and power tech at a great price and save even more doing it. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash Amelia to get 15% off site wide. Again, go to buyraycon.com forward slash Amelia or click the link in the description below to get 15% off site wide. Now, let's get back to the episode. Instead of a fire extinguisher, I really need to start just carrying a jumper pack on me. <laughs> first the Ferrari, now the GT40. Ford versus Ferrari. Why, why do you think I brought an extra battery? This is for you to keep. <laughs> I forgot that the battery's under a cover and I need a socket to get to it. And these city guys just walked, drove by. I was like, you guys have a Crescent Wrench? They're like, we do. I was like, okay, cool. 
I just need something small. I think it's a 10 mil. I just got okay. a, the battery died. It's a flawed design to put a cover over a battery if you're stranded on the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hell no. I can get one. If I can't now. fit, you definitely can't fit. <laughs> It's an old Ford. Beautiful. Thank you. Not as beautiful as you. Oh, you're too Aww. sweet. <laughs> just put it back. Yeah. It just fing died on me again. The second I give it any gas. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> I think it's got um, a clog somewhere in one of the fuel lines. Okay. All right. I love how I just take the car for a little bit of a drive, have some fun, talk about all the mechanical issues that need to get fixed, and I get stranded. It wasn't the transmission. <laughs> it wasn't the transmission, but now it's a new issue that we didn't know was there before. <laughs> I'm not totally stranded. Yeah, at least we're not far. You think so the Harley, Harley could tell Harley. it? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm down. Harley could tell it. Yeah. For some reason, She's not getting fuel. And we think then the battery died from cranking it so much because we weren't getting the fuel to start the car to begin with. Sean just went to go get some more fuel. We're gonna see if we can put some more fuel in the tank, see if that helps it. If it doesn't, ratchet straps, we're towing it back to the shop. That's good enough. I can guess what happened all day, but until we can make it back to the shop and actually tear things apart, we're not gonna know what's wrong with this car. I just, I'm just trying to get back safely at this point. These yeah. cars, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Quick, call Dean, see if we can get the freaking Daytona back. <laughs> yeah, right? We're just gonna drop this Dean off. Dean runs and drives great, just missing the Daytona a little. <laughs> I will say though, after this car sat for 20 years and the fact that we didn't have to replace that new lines and we just put fuel in one of the tanks, we don't know about the other yet. She ran and drove fine. I mean, you know, I'm actually not surprised that eventually it failed after a few miles. New fuel, we're gonna fire her again and hope that maybe the gallon of fuel we put in previously just wasn't enough for the pump to pick up. Confident. Once I got in the higher RPM, I think we were just asking maybe too much of the fuel pump. Anyone who's been in the situation of just trying to limp home knows how stressful this is. There we go. There we go. There we go. Come on, intersection. Let's not break down in the middle of an intersection. Come on, come on, come on. Oh god. Oh, no, 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 damn it, it died again. We're coasting, we're coasting. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Really nice, you guys. <laughs> if I had a fuel pressure gauge. Note to self, install one. All right, we're gonna test the fuel to see if there's any gunk in it. <laughs> there's no fuel coming out. <laughs> oh, now fuel's coming out. That's not enough. That's very, not a whole lot of fuel. Now let's test pre-filter. Nothing. Okay. Let's let's take those apart and see what's inside of it. This little thing is actually a one-way valve, and this little valve was covered in gunk. So we're thinking maybe this just wasn't working properly. Don't laugh at me. One way. It works. The other way. <laughs> it doesn't work. Maybe this was the issue. Let's try. If not, we just clean something. 
Ready? Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that flow. All good now? <laughs> yeah, it's much see. nicer. Damn, so this little one-way valve failed on us. Well, it got clogged. That's what happened. The tank ran low. It picked up a bunch of sediment on the bottom. It clogged the one-way valve, which restricted flow. But now she's fixed. Sticky. Now that that's fixed, let's take a look at the squealing, what we believe is coming from the e-brake. Now what you show, we just back the scrut a little to not apply so much pressure on the back of the rotor. We think it helped. We don't hear squeaking. We're gonna do the same to the other side and uh, hopefully got a fixed car. <laughs> It's quiet. Great, so we got the fuel fixed, which we didn't realize was an issue before today. And now the squeaking fixed. Next up, I'm gonna swap the dryer out for the AC in order to get this to finally work. While I'm doing this, Sandy's working on Camaro. Georgie is also working on Camaro. Georgie's helping us fabricate these subframe connectors inside of the go. Camaro. Every time consent. Georgie has been here, James consent. has cut him out of the YouTube wait, episode. Wait, but this is who's been doing all space? the incredible welding so far on this car. Incredible, so-called incredible. We're trying our best I mean, best he's stacking here. dimes on that roll bar. Oh yeah, of course. You know how I do it. <laughs> We're just here slaving away. I got a final tomorrow, but I'd rather be here instead because if not, my dogs don't eat, so. <laughs> True or false, I sent 100 hamburgers to your house. You did, and I ate <laughs> all of them that weekend. George yes. is gonna finish the separate connectors. I'm gonna finish the AC. Ah! Wait, have Sandy go to McDonald's and get us McFlurries. Ah! All right, we are on to our final task now, and that's taking a look at the transmission. When I spoke with Quaif, they said that we needed to look at the linkage. We've already looked at that. We're gonna give it one more shot to see if maybe it just needs readjustment. If not, that could be catastrophic. That could mean pulling out this transmission and either replacing it or finding someone who can repair it. First. Yeah, yeah that's first, huh? Yeah. Take it out first. We're gonna adjust the cable just a little bit. There's a little bit of slack in it. Oh, all right. Let's go for a test drive and see if everything's fixed. This is just one step into first to see if it'll get out of it. I'm gonna ease into it. Or should I just step on it? Yeah, just roll into it. pops out of gear. It lasted a little longer though, it felt like. All right, let me try one more time using into it, see if it pops out again. Whoop, yep. I think trans is effed. Oh man, I think the trans is done too. Sucks. Yeah. Onwards. <laughs> They're yelling at me, I guess I gotta do it. Who are they yelling to a burnout? <laughs> they were yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When I bought this car, especially after sitting for 20 years, I was stoked to find out the motor was good, but I'm kind of bummed to find out that the transmission now needs to come out. Thank you everyone who supported for the Black Friday collection. I'm actually gonna be doing a special December winter collection just in time for the new year and the holidays too in two weeks. So stay tuned for that as well. Ikro, we out here with love. Bye! <laughs>